Because Charles Wesley, who once said, if I had a thousand tongues, I would have used them all to praise the Lord. This evening, we all have but one. And a special person here, David Hunt, is going to use that tongue that God has given him to give him praise. Thank you. 
this year, wasn't it? Amen. How are you today? Good. Good. The Lord was good to you today? Amen. You want us to praise the Lord? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, isn't it? Amen. As I listened to your the presentation you had a few moments ago, I could not help but think of a sermon, a presentation I'm going to do next week. Because I'm also going to talk to you about sex next week and how to unleash the power of sexual intimacy. A lot of you are frustrated and unfulfilled and trying all kinds of things. You need to come and hear how you can unleash the power of sexual intimacy. Hello? I counsel a lot of people who tell me we've been trying for years, we've been doing it for a long time, but I'm also frustrated, I'm never satisfied, all he does is goes to sleep. Hello? And she's never taken the time to find out what my real needs are. But you need to come, because we're going to shock you. Hello? You want to know which night it is? You come back tomorrow night, Friday night, and I'll tell you which night it is. <laughs> I have a problem, though, and only you can solve it. And your answer will determine what I do. There are a number of questions that you have asked. There are a number of concerns you have expressed. And when I look at the calendar that says August 14th, final presentation I am not going to be able to cover all the subjects hello there are four subjects that I will not be able to cover if we end on the 14th of August so this is what I want to ask you I have commitments I have a commitment in Boston on the 15th I have a commitment in Barbados I have commitments that I need to attend to however I am willing to rearrange my schedule and make different reservations for these young men if you would promise me that if I extend this thing for another week that you would come Amen. but I have to be convinced that you will come Amen. if you're not going to come I'm going to pack my bags and go home and see you sometime later so if you're going to all who go, if you're going to come stand up Okay, I, I think you've spoken, and I have learned to follow your will when you speak. So we will extend this meeting a couple of nights so that we can cover all the subjects. A number of you have asked a number of questions. And so we need to make those arrangements. There's subjects like, how do I know the truth about suffering? Why do innocent people suffer? If God is a God of love, why does he permit pain and suffering a number of people have asked that question why is my life in such a turmoil and you tell me that God loves me uh -huh. another subject that you've expressed interest in is how can I secure my future we talk about tomorrow how can I be certain as to what my life will be tomorrow how to be free from guilt You've talked a lot about guilt and the conscience. But I want to know, how can I really be free from guilt? And so on Friday evening, we will talk about how to secure your future. Amen. On Saturday evening, we will talk about why do innocent people suffer? Hello? Amen. On Sunday night, we will talk about how to be free from guilt. Yeah. You need to be here. How to be totally free from guilt. Because you see, the answer will shock you. Amen. And then on Monday night, a presentation which I enjoy. And I will give you my personal testimony on Monday evening. Amen. I will tell you on Monday evening why I live the way I live. Amen. And that subject is entitled, How to Know When You Are Really in Love. Amen. Hello? So all those of you who are married, you need to bring your spouses. Those of you who have your boyfriends or who are looking for boyfriends, you need to come too. Or girlfriends. How to know when you're really in love. Then on Tuesday, we will talk about how to unleash the power of sexual intimacy. 
And then a subject that should give you great comfort and great joy on Wednesday night, how to get complete victory over past mistakes. Do any of you have some past mistakes that still haunt you? Well, next Wednesday night, we are going to tell you how to get complete victory over your past mistakes. And a, a, a presentation that will absolutely stun you is entitled, Sweetheart, You've Got to Go. Sweetheart, You've Got to Go. And there's some of you that have some sweethearts that you need to get rid of. Hello? And then on Friday next, on Thursday next, that's Thursday night, we, we will have a meeting next week, Thursday night. In order to get all done that you need done, I have to have a meeting next Thursday night. And then on Friday night, when you want a lawyer for your family, how to select the right lawyer for your family? Amen. On Friday night, you will get an answer that you can t go out of here and use as a standard by which you can know how to select the right lawyer for your family. If you think the, the, the topics are interesting, you need to hear the subjects. If you think the titles are sweet, you need to hear the presentation. Because I suggest to you that you will be a new and different person and you will have a clear understanding of what your family needs to be and what God intends for you. Now, there's only one thing I can tell you. And that's what God's word says. Amen. I cannot say that I love you and tell you less than what God's word says. Hello? Amen. But I know that if you were to follow the word of God, your life will be filled with joy and peace. Amen. And you will be a new and a different person. And when your friends see you, they will see you with a smile on your face, with a song in your heart, and a spring in your heels, and they will say, Woo! What happened to you? And you'll be able to say, my Jesus did it for me. Amen. Hello? Amen. So you keep coming. I will make the arrangements to be here. We will talk to the folk. You see, it costs us a lot to extend these meetings because it means that I have to pay another week of rent. But I take you at your word. Amen. Hello? Amen. And we'll be here. Let us pray. Eternal God, we are so thankful for your goodness and your guidance. And oh God, you have never failed us. You've never disappointed us. And again tonight we pray that you will speak. And that you will speak in accents clear. And that your name would be glorified in all the earth. In Jesus name, Amen. The time is 8.30. We will be finished this presentation by shortly before 9 o'clock. Is that alright? Is that okay? Yeah. Good. Last night, we talked about the need to experience the power of God in our lives so that we may indeed love. And we said that one of God's goals for our lives is that we be what? That we be perfect or complete. But we said that there are two concepts of perfection. One is Western philosophy and the other one is biblical or Eastern Hebrew thought. Western philosophy is fixed or fixated and static. In order for something to be perfect, it has to be made that way and the moment we touch it, it would become imperfect because it would be soiled by the imprints of our hands. Biblical perfection, however, is dynamic, which is a process. It's an ongoing development. And at every stage of your development, you can be as perfect as you can be moving towards ultimate perfection. And therefore, we find that in the Christian life, that you will stumble and fall from time to time. But what God looks at is the direction of your life. And if you are walking towards Jesus, even though you may be falling along the way, Jesus says, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to do what? Amen. To forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. And therefore, we do not need to get discouraged when we are in the valley of life. All we need to do is look up because our redemption draws nigh. Amen. And when we learn that no matter what the circumstances are, 
that God loves us and that when the circumstances are most difficult is when God is closest to us, we will learn how to live life with joy. And why do I place so much emphasis on this? Because I have learned over the years that we can give you all the information we want about psychology and relationships and you will process it but you will go home and be the same person you've always been that if change is going to come you need power Amen. and that that power is in Jesus Christ Amen. and so with all the counseling that can be done and let me say to you that beginning next week I will be available for regular counseling sessions there will be half an hour to 45 minute sessions. They will be free of charge. We will not charge you for the counseling. I will be available during the day. And we will tell you where you can contact us. We will put a sign up sheet out there that you can sign up for the sessions where you can come in and we will sit down and work with you through some of the real issues that are bothering you. The other thing that we, I would like to do, as we do in every seminar like this, there's some people who want to get married. And they said, but I don't have a lot of money. You don't need a lot of money to get married. That's right. Say it again. That's right. When I got married, we had 11 people at our wedding. I've married people who spent, I married a couple along with two other pastors. And they had 250 guests. And they spent close to $100,000. And it was a Hawaiian vacation, and it was a new Audi Turbo 5000, and it was a condominium in a certain place. And the marriage, at the end of eight months, the husband left and found somebody else. And I have discovered over the years that the more gaudy and the more expensive the weddings are, the shorter the marriages. That's true. You need to keep your money for your marriage and not spend it on your wedding. Because see, the other thing is that the same people you invite to your wedding talk about you anyhow. Amen. They're sitting down there eating your food and says, I don't know why she married him. Why they eat what you provide. Okay? So if you are interested in getting married, you come and talk to us because we can marry you right here. It's a nice looking setting. You can have a video of the wedding. And we can perform a beautiful ceremony for you. And some of you may need to do that so as to bring your life into harmony with God's will. Amen. But beginning next week, we'll be available for regular counseling sessions. And so we, we will make a sheet available. Bill, where is he? You need to prepare a sign-up sheet for me and have it posted out there so that they can sign up beginning to Friday, to Friday night when they leave so that we can have the session scheduled. And there's some testing that we may have to do, some psychological testing on you. But, and those tests normally cost $35 a person, but we will make the test available to you free of charge. Hello? Yeah. So you need to come if you know you have a need. And men, if your marriage is in trouble, don't let the woman come seeking counsel. You take the initiative. Amen. Take the responsibility and say, we're going to do something about it. Amen. Good marriages take time. Bad marriages take more time. Hello? But all marriages need some time. The same thing is true of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Relationship with Christ is like a marriage. There are ups and downs. There are struggles. There are disappointments along the way. Not on the part of Christ, but on our behalf. But you see, Jesus is committed to our welfare and our well-being. He not only wants to share his life with us, he's not only truthful, but he's loyal. And because we end up in the valley of our experience, he does not abandon us. Amen. He says, I am committed to you. And even when you leave me and go after another, I'm still committed to you. And when you come back and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, have mercy, forgive me. He says, my child, you're forgiven, you're cleansed. And he sets you back on the way. Amen. And if you should happen to die along the way, because of the direction of your life, Jesus Christ makes the difference up and God counts it as righteousness. Amen. The only man or woman who is lost is the man or woman who fails to confess their sin. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. You see, 
when the Bible speaks of perfection, it speaks of process. Mm-hmm. Well, why do I say that? Because you see, the Bible has a formula by which we may become perfect. And that's what I want to give you tonight. Watch this. The Bible tells us in Romans 6.23 that what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. My friends, every one of us who's born into this world is born subject to eternal death. Because we are born out of relationship with God. We are out of position. And if God were to leave us to ourselves, no matter what we do, no matter how much we get, no matter what we enjoy, the end would be destruction. The only hope for our lives is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And as you seek to marry each other, or as you have been married to each other, you also need to be married to Christ. Because the man or the woman that you're married to may disappoint you. They may fail you. But Jesus will never fail you. And you need to be sure that Jesus Christ is at the center and the heart of your relationship. And so having been born out of position, out of relationship, our need is to come into relationship with Christ. But we can't do it for ourselves. Because the sinner cannot save himself. The the Bible says, can the leper do what? Can the leper change his parts? Can the what? Can the Ethiopian change his skin? No. There isn't anything I can do about the color of my skin. Nothing you can do about the color of your skin. That's who we are. The same thing is true of our heart condition. The Bible says that the heart of humanity is deceitful. The biggest lie that we tell is that we are somebody that we are not. It's deceitful and desperately wicked. We are capable of hurting each other beyond imagination. And when you stand in my way, I will destroy you because of the desperation and the deceitfulness of my heart. The wickedness of my heart says that I have the capacity to be cruel. The only thing that gives us any sense of courtesy, any sense of compassion is the grace of Jesus Christ. And so our need is a savior. And so the text says, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so your need is Christ. When you come to Jesus Christ, and not because of anything you do, there isn't anything I can do. The Bible says all righteousness, the best efforts that we make are like filthy rags. How often have we passed the street and a dog was killed and it lays there until it's about to burst? How often have you seen a scout laying along the road and nobody claims it? The Bible says that all best efforts are like a dead dog along the street or a scout. Nobody wants the best that we can do because they're worthless. And so I can't work my way to heaven. Obedience does not save me. There isn't anything any one of us can do to come into a marriage relationship with Christ. It is all by grace. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And what grace is, grace is God's unmerited favor. In spite of who we are, God has compassion on us. And reaches out to draw us to himself. Why? Because God loves us so. And so any goodness in us is not inherent, it is infused, it's imparted, it's imputed, it is given to us by God. But when we cry to Jesus, he hears our cry. And the Bible says his grace moves us from out of relationship into position. And a relationship with Christ is established. The Bible calls that justification. 
Justification is the day that you have been born into the family of God. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Have you been born into the family of God? Are you a child of God? Can you say tonight, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He's in the world today. He lives! But you see, it's not sufficient for him to live. He must live within your heart. Can you say that you have a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you been cleansed by his grace? Do you know that your sins are forgiven you? Do you know that you belong to Jesus? The Bible says you need to be justified. You see, at that moment, Jesus Christ looks at you as if you had never sinned. As if you had never been out of position. As if you had never been out of relationship. Jesus Christ looks at you as if you were always his child. Why? Because of the grace of Jesus Christ. But just like a little baby, the moment a baby is born, what happens to it? It begins to do what? It begins to do what? To grow. It doesn't wait six months to grow. It be, if it waits six months, it'll die. Amen. It is born and it begins to grow. And so, as you are born, the relationship is born in faith. You must continue now to grow. To grow means that you are walking in the direction of God. Right. And the Bible calls that growth sanctification. Amen. What am I spelling? Whatever. <laughs> the Bible says that you have to be sanctified. Well, what is sanctification? My friends... It is to be set apart to God's glory. Mm -hmm. Justification occurs in a moment. In an instant. The moment you say, Lord, forgive me. He says it's done. Amen. You're now a new and a different person. You are now on the road towards God. You were walking down the street away from God and something stopped you in your tracks and said, go to Mandeville Room. And you came and the word of God and the spirit of God and the grace of God struck you. Somebody knocked on your door and said, would you take these lessons? And something happened. And it turned your life around. And suddenly, rather than walking with your back towards God, you're now walking with your face towards God. And you are now walking in the direction of God. Amen. The moment you're turned around, that's justification. And as you continue to walk towards God, you are becoming sanctified. It's not based on how you feel. It is based on the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. You got to believe it. That because you have been brought into relationship, Jesus Christ sanctifies. And my friends, you need to understand that sanctification is a gift from God Amen. by grace by faith you aren't you aren't justified by faith and then do something else by you're born by faith you continue to live by faith from faith to faith are you with me Amen. well justification occurs when in a moment sanctification is the work of a lifetime how long does it take you see, my friends, the process of sanctification never ceases as long as we are alive. It takes a lifetime to become like God. Amen. Now, you know, some people say, but you're a Christian and you did that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Says, darling, I may not be everything that God wants me to be, but I know that he loves me. Just keep on going towards God and the more you go towards God is the more you will become, you will begin to behave like God. For what is sanctification? If justification is the relationship, sanctification is the character. Amen. Having been born into the family, you now begin to grow up like the family. 
and it is the character of God. Sanctification is the perfecting of the character of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello? Yeah. Amen. Well, how do you know if you have the character of Jesus Christ? It is what have you done with the word of God? Mm-hmm. For the word of God is the, it is the revelation of the character of God. Right. And so the way we measure our characters is by the word of God. Not by what somebody says. Not by what somebody else is doing. Yes. It is how does my life measure up to the word of God. Because it is by the word that you were born. Not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed. Therefore it is by the word that you must continue to live. For the word of God is life. Amen. Men of a man or woman loves Jesus Christ. They delight to do his word. Yes. For his word is the evidence of his character and so we move from being born to becoming more a part of the family you take on the characteristics the behavior this is the attitude hello Amen. it's an attitude that says i belong to jesus this is the behavior i behave like jesus are you with me Sanctification is your ability through the grace of Christ to behave like Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. Because the Bible says that God wants to glorify you. Glorification. C-A-T-I-O-N. God wants to glorify you. Glorification is the ultimate perfection. Hello? Glorification is the ultimate perfection. But glorification doesn't occur until Jesus Christ comes the second time. Amen. As long as we are on this earth looking for Jesus, we will be in the process of sanctification. Because sanctification says to God that you deserve to be just to be glorified. Sanctification is your fitness for for what? For glorification. If you're not sanctified, you can't be glorified. And you can't be sanctified unless you're justified. But if you're justified, you will be sanctified. And if you're sanctified, you will be glorified. And my friends, when we think of all the pain and the hurt and the anguish, when we think of all the misery in this life, glorification is a glorious thought. Because in that moment, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, that he will change this mortal to immortality. He will change this corruptible to incorruptibility. Well, what is it that he changes? Watch this. In justification, he changes our position. From out of position, into position. Are you with me? In sanctification, he changes our characters. From the character of the devil to the character of us. Just as this aisle separates this hall, there are some of you who got the character of the devil. Your need is to be changed to the character of God. That's sanctification. Because having the position changed now puts you in a position to have the character changed. When the character has been changed, then God wants to glorify you. Well, what is it that God changes in glorification? And that is why the walk is a daily walk. That's why along the way you may slip and fall. You see, because until God changes what he changes in glorification, you will always be subject to sin. Hello? And brother, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the church or or you've been professing Jesus, you're all subject to sin. We all are subject to sin. We all are tempted daily. And you know something? We all sin every day in thought, in word, and in deed. Because that which makes us subject to sin will not be changed until God glorifies us. But... Even though we may slip and fall in the sanctifying process, all we need to do is confess our sin and God treats us as if we had never sinned and the process of perfection continues. Because you see, in sanctification, we have the completeness of character of Christ. Glorification is sinlessness. 
Well, what is it that God changes in glorification? God changes our nature. Hello? Amen. You see... What God does when God glorifies us, he takes away the very propensity to sin. We are no longer subject to fall. The very desire to do wrong is gone. But in order for God to change the nature, we must be sanctified. Because see, when God changes the nature, God gives us a divine nature. Hello. In sanctification, Christ is living in us. Having entered into relationship. In glorification, Christ is not only living in us, but we now have the power of God in us at our disposal. You get that? You understand what I'm saying? My friends, you cannot get the nature of God unless you have the character of God. Because if you have the character of the devil and God gives you his power, you will use it to curse God. So God can only give you his power when you have God's character because then you use God's power to glorify God. So the key is the character. And everything the Bible is trying to do is to show us what the character is. There are some things you don't like, but the question is not whether you like it, it's whether you want the character. If you want the character, you will do the word. By faith. Because you see, the nature, this corruptible shall put on incorruptibility, this mortal shall put on immortality. We now are no longer subject to death. God would have removed the very curse of sin from our lives forevermore. And at that moment, in the twinkling of an eye, this corruptible will put on incorruptibility, this mortal immortality. Jesus Christ does this when he comes, my friends. At the second coming of Jesus Christ is when we are changed and given a new nature. But the only people who will be caught up to be changed are those who have the character. Now, we all would like to be glorified. We all would like to get rid of this broken down body arthritis cancer asthma my wife called me this morning and said your daughter had to go to the hospital last night because she had an attack of asthma and they think it's bronchitis and she's at Vassar College in Poughkeepsie there's a coming a day my friends when it all will be taken away that day is the day that God will glorify us because we've been sanctified. Let me ask you something. If you should die tonight, are you in a position to be glorified? How can you answer that? Ask yourself the question, whose character do I have? How do I know whose character do I have? What is my attitude about Jesus? Is my attitude one, Lord, your will be done? And do you evidence that attitude in the behavior of practicing the word? I believe that I'm talking to honest men and women who want to be brought out of position into position. Let me see your hands. Having entered and all you need to do is say, Lord, I believe that your grace is sufficient. And at that moment, God brings you into position. Having been brought into position tonight, you want to say, Lord, I want you to complete the sanctifying process in my life. I would like to have your character. I intend to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's your desire. Stand. And then you say, Lord, because I'm in relationship and your character is being perfected in me, I ask you to give me the strength to live for you every day so that in that day when Jesus Christ shall come you will change my nature and I can be glorified come it's going to cost you something it means that you have to be willing to surrender everything to Jesus Christ come the only decision you have to make is Jesus what are you going to do about Jesus Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we 
thank you, O Lord, for the process of sanctification on this road to glorification. We thank you so much, dear God, because we are accepted before we are acceptable. We are made right before we are righteous. Yes. So we thank you for this grace, O Lord, that you have extended towards your fallen people. Lord, tonight we are standing because we are in need of this grace. Father, we do not have the power to change ourselves. We do not have the power to do that which is right and just and good because we're evil and we're sinful. Therefore, Lord, we pray that you would uh, make something happen within our lives this very moment, Lord. Send your divine spirit to breathe upon us and work that change that is necessary, O oh Lord, that we may become your children, that we may possess the character of God. Father, this is our desire this evening. So disappoint us not. We ask it not because we're worthy, but because of Calvary and because of the spilled blood of your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Would you say after me, dear Lord? I recognize that I've been born out of position, separated, estranged, and cut off from God in a sinful condition. And my only hope is in Jesus. For his grace is my sufficiency. And when by faith I accept his grace, he brings me back into right relationship with you. And I thank you tonight that such a relationship has been restored.